Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And my dear friends, yes, yes, we've done it again. No, you did it again because this community is incredible. And this morning, our guest is also incredible. She's a former nurse uh, who has grown a following on TikTok, or excuse me, Instagram, probably on TikTok too, who knows, we'll learn, uh, probably grown multiple followings on TikTok for for, for uh, all that, that, that matters. She has just recently hit a very prestigious and rare rank inside of our affiliate pro. She's both a client and a student here at Legendary. She's also decided to work within the Make Money Online niche. She has become an affiliate here at Legendary Marketer promoting our courses and programs to her audience. I would assume because she had a wonderful experience here, but we'll let her tell that story. And she has just hit the prestigious rank of platinum within our affiliate program. You do the math on that. And uh, I recently got to spend time with this young lady at um, our mastermind in Orlando. Uh, and it was a real pleasure. And I'm excited to have her on the show this morning. The one, the only. Kayla, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Remind us where you're calling in from. Uh, New York. Oh. <laughs> Buffalo, New York. <laughs> That's right. I think we talked about me yes. uh, going to the Buffalo Bills training camp up in Fredonia when I was a kid and that connection. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes. And how everybody is a Buffalo Bill fanboy and fit. <laughs> Girl up there, and if yes, they lose, yes. you're all sad and depressed. And if they win, you're happy and excited. For them. <laughs> yes, yeah. Chelsea was telling that story about her and her husband. That's that's right. That's right. Yes. Okay. Well, um, let's talk about how you found us. What led you here? Have you found what you were looking for? What did you do before the nursing? Whatever else, other ventures you tried. Tell us how you got here. Who is Kayla? How did you find us? What were you looking for? Um, and, and do you feel like you finally found what you're looking for that's helping you to be able to do the things that you want to do and that you deserve to do? Uh, okay. That's a lot of questions. <laughs> you're, you're a um, lot of questions. So I know that you can yeah, um, throw a lot at you. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't know me as Kayla in this online world. Um, I picked my name because I, I picked my handle as that mama in pajamas, because when I started this, I was on maternity leave and, you know, I was going through postpartum. I was just like, did not feel good. I don't think any woman feels amazing after they have a baby. Um, and I was just like in my pajamas all the time. I was like, oh, I just, you know, feel like crap. I don't know. Um, and so when I started this, I obviously didn't think I was going to like become what I did. So I was like, yeah, just do something, you know, like that mom in pajamas. And I meet people now, like in person, like at the mastermind and they're like, so like, what's your real name? Like, what's your name? I'm like, it's Kayla. It's Kayla. That's my name. Um, so a lot, it's funny though, because I don't think about it. I'm like, you guys don't know my name. <laughs> you don't know it. Um, but I was a psych nurse. So I worked with people in the very different stages of their mental health. Um, you know, schizophrenics, dementia patients, Alzheimer's patients, uh, multiple personality disorder, all of that. A lot of people think that's insane, but I loved it. Um, I loved my job. I actually loved my job as a nurse, um, mm. but I had to work like 40 to 50 hours a week, my whole pregnancy. And I worked the day before I had my C-section with my son, I was working. So I worked like a nine hour shift that day and I didn't even know I was in labor because I thought I threw my back out because of course, as a nurse, you have to do a lot of stuff you're really not supposed to be doing during pregnancy, like pulling people around and lifting them and people are falling. you got to pick them up and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I thought I threw my back out and I was like, yeah, my back just really hurts. It hurts so bad. And mm -hmm. uh, my fiance was like, I don't know. I don't think it's just like you threw your back out. I'm like, no, it just, I think I threw it out, but I'm like, it's fine. I have to work for another week. Like I had to work up until when I was supposed to have my baby, but he came early. Um, so I thought I threw my back out. I actually ended up in labor, but, um, when I was working, my daughter was very sick. Um, she has a very rare condition in her mm. trachea and she also has childhood asthma. So she was having like all these breathing issues 
at daycare. She was ending up in the hospital for like weeks at a time. And my job was not happy <laughs> because mm. I would be at work and I'd be like, I have to go. Like her daycare called me. She has to go to the hospital. I have to take her. And it's like, you can't just leave a nursing, a nursing floor. It's like, you have to find somebody to cover your shift. You have to count meds with somebody. You have to give report on every single patient. Um, so it take me like 45 minutes to leave my job. And um, last November or two Novembers ago, whenever it was, I feel like I've been doing this for so long, but it's not that long. Um, I worked for four days out of the month of November and I was scheduled five days a week. <laughs> and I worked for four days total because my daughter was so sick. Um, she was just so sick. And I was of course having to work because I need a maternity leave and we had to pay our bills and we worked opposite shifts and it was just craziness, especially in the height of COVID. So yeah. when I was on maternity leave, I was like, I just don't want to do this. Like, I just, I can't deal with sending both my kids to daycare. You know, first of all, it's like $3,000 a month and then both of them being sick and like we, we lose our jobs or we're not being able to pay our bills because one of us is basically not working. Like it was just Looney Tunes. It was Looney Tunes. Um, so I ended up actually finding this on TikTok because of course I was looking for different ways that I can make money from home. Um, I looked up like virtual assistant. I looked up like the text broker thing. Chelsea and I did the text broker thing together. We were like, yeah, it's like $300. Um, you know, we were both broke. We were both looking for ways to make money and we're like, you know, let's try some of these. Let's try it out. Um, yeah. but we were in a lot of different Facebook groups and we kept seeing the course and I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to do it. And I remember like, when I did it, he was already back to work. My fiance was already back to work after we had our son. And I was like, you know, um, I think I'm going to take this course. It's $7. I think I'm going to do it. And he's always been big into business. I've always been the one that's like, stop taking those courses. You're ridiculous. Um, and he was like, just, he's like, whatever, like it's $7. If you want to take it, I think it's a good idea. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I think it's a scam, but if I lose $7 and I lose $7, um, and then I took it and I was like, holy bagumba. <laughs> I was like, that's what my daughter says all the time. But I was like, this is crazy. Like, this is so much information. This is like a whole new world. And I started just obsessing over it. And then once I got like more education with Legendary, I figured out like the core four and I really figured out how to do that and apply that. And that's what I've used in my business is the core four and really diversifying and branching out so that I have so many streams of income that like, I don't even know what to do with them. Like they just run all the time. Um, so I was just like determined like to get this going and I was obsessing over it and I was like all these moms they're being able to stay home with their kids and like if I could just make $10,000 a month neither of us would have to work and our daughter wouldn't have to go into daycare our son wouldn't have to go into daycare like we could just stay home. Um, so I was determined 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 to make it work um, and to not go back to my nursing job and I didn't I didn't go back so mm. I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, friends, there you have it. And it's interesting because we've got this uh, this amazing wave of stay at home moms and women in our community who are kicking butt and taking names. And um, what what is your message this morning to other women, to other moms who like what what have you learned from this process that uh, about yourself, about society, about just mm -hmm. like. What, 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 you know, I think that you've said a lot about your, about your nursing career, of course, but also there, there, you know, if you go back a generation or two, women were mainly staying at home and had no, um, kind of place in business, if you will. Right. And that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. What comes up for you as I say that? So something that me and like my other nurse friends used to talk about, like we're still friends. I love, I love my community that I built when I was a nurse, but something that we say all the time is like society expects women to work as if they don't have kids and it expects them to parent their kids as if they don't have a job. So like, it's just, it's impossible <laughs> to wow. be a woman in today's society. Like the pressure that they put on us, the things that they expect us to do, like we're expected to run the house, raise the kids, work a job, be excellent at the job because there's so much more pressure on women that you have to be good. Um, like I remember on the nursing floor that I worked at, I had this nurse manager and like, he hated me, <laughs> he hated me 
because I would always just tell him like, this is not okay. This is not what I'm doing. Like, I'm going to do this. You could do something else. But it was like the pressure that they would put on the women. They would just nitpick us. Like, yeah. well, why didn't you do this? Well, why didn't you do that? And I'm like, well, why didn't you ask Jared over there why he didn't do it? Like, why are you asking us if we didn't do it? Um, totally. But it's like, you know, we're expected to raise our kids as if we don't have a job. And then we're expected to go to said job and focus only on said job as if we don't have kids. Um, so there's just this insane pressure because we are so many things to so many people. Yeah. Um, and you have kids like, you know, when you have a kid, it just like it takes over you. It's like something yeah. like awakens inside of you. And it's like this is like for me, it was like this is what I'm meant to do with my life. Like before that, I was just kind of everywhere but when i had my daughter i was like this is like my purpose in life is to raise yeah. this child um i came from a lot of trauma i don't speak to my mom um i had a really rough upbringing like you asked me you know how did i get here and stuff like i used to live in my car i just made a video about it yesterday on my instagram like i used to live in my car and work four different jobs and shower at different people's houses that i worked with Mm -hmm. um you know years ago when i was like 18 and like i struggled to get to that nursing job and i fought my way up to the top and then when i had my daughter i was like you know i all i want to do though is to be home with her like i love my patients i love my job but like i hated that i had to drop her off for 10 hours a day at yeah. daycare as soon as it opened and pick her up in the evening and then like rush her through dinner bath time bedtime everything like it was a nightmare to me it was terrible yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just, it was not what I wanted to do. Um, but I never thought about an online business ever. Like I just, I don't like getting out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I don't like doing that. Yeah. Um, and my fiance is always one that's like, come on, we need to try this. We need to try this. And I'm like, no, it sounds terrible. I don't want to do that. Um, so this was the first time that I had ever myself had the idea, like, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and try something and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just that. like something about it, like just told me like, you should try it. You need to try it. You need to try it. Um, you know, sometimes when you look up things online, it's like, yeah, but you need like a seven year degree and you need two, two years of marketing experience and this and that. And like this course was just like, yeah, come in. You're a complete beginner. We'll teach you. We'll show you like we'll show you the ropes. And like I learned by someone showing me. So I remember watching it over and over and over again, the videos and being like, okay, I don't have it. I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> I don't have it. I'm going to watch it again until I got it. And then now I'm like, you know, the first time I built a funnel, it was a nightmare. Um, I have like 22 funnels now just alone for Chelsea and I social media growth force. And mm -hmm. I can build one in like less than five minutes. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to go whip it up real quick. And then I just do it. But it's like, I had to learn it over and over again because I've never done anything like this. I've never done an online business, never been tech savvy, never done any of this. And now it like comes to me so easily. Mm. I this this is all resonating with so many women on the show right now who are listening. Um, Elizabeth says, what an amazing determination story, Kayla. Yes. Love this young woman determined to succeed no matter what. Kayla, you are inspiring so many people this morning. Preach, sister. So with you, <laughs> Kayla. Um, you know, yes, I am a woman. Hear me roar. <laughs> yes, um, I love that phrase. I love that phrase. My dear girlfriend, mother of all truth bombs. Okay. <laughs> and, and so many more. Preach from Megan. Um, so I, I, I asked the question about women and entrepreneurship a moment ago because well, what a lot of people don't realize is that Legendary is also ran by a lot of women. Mm -hmm. and, um, you saw that when you came to the mastermind, right? I mean, uh, besides me, the, the two people in charge, the, the two other executives here, Julie and Joanne, are um, I and mean, our customer service manager is a, is a, is a female as well. Um, it, it, you know, I also have a daughter in to me, what I f have found over the years is um, that women are just as or more capable. Now, clearly, our physiology can be different and men can be stronger physically. But a lot of the things in the workforce anymore, friends, don't requ require you to be 
carrying cinder blocks. You know what I mean? I, I mean, we're not surely the trades um, and, and things that require uh, immense strength or whatever may be b better suited for a large person, a strong person, man or female. Because I damn sure have met some very strong, and I don't mean emotionally, I mean physically strong females as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I have no limits personally and no preconceived notions of what a male or female should be doing in our workforce, similar to what I believe previous generations did have. I, I, when I hire people, I hire the best person for the job, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, skin color, religion, it does not matter. And, and you see that when you also when you come to our events and you see the actual people behind the scenes who are, um, you know, running the company. I have been amazed by this movement of stay at home moms and just women in general, from nurses to what what how has how has you building your audience? How have you um, used your story and how have you connected with women in a way, not that you already aren't demonstrating that this morning by just telling your story, but do you find primarily that women are following you? And, and, and what advice do you have to somebody who's looking to dial into their niche and find their audience? Mm, that's a big question. <laughs> um, I think that for me, I wasn't, when I first started, I wasn't like, you know, I need to find a very specific audience and I'm only going to talk to this audience and I'm only going to do this, this, and this. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to give value to people. I'm going to give people value and talk about how this opportunity changed my life and share valuable information to anybody who wants to hear. Now, as I've grown a larger audience, of course, I do think that I have a woman dominant audience. Like, I mean, I can see that by my analytics. I can look and see that I have more women than men. Um, and we do get to connect with a lot of women in our mentorship group, in our, you know, our social media growth course and all of those things. But I think that I hear so many women that are like, you know, I just don't, you know, I can't, I can't make videos. I can't build an audience of this many people. I can't do this. And I'm like, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, like I was wearing diapers still when I started this, like I had a C-section. So you bleed for a long time. Like I was literally wearing those high-waisted <laughs> diapers and walking around in my pajamas. I made all my videos in my pajamas for months, months and months and months, because that's all I was comfortable in. And like, I saw this thing. I don't remember if I saw it in legendary or not, but something said like, talk to the cameras. If you're talking to someone that you're so comfortable speaking to and someone that I was always able to like cut up with, talk to without judgment is my sister. Like we've been together our whole life. So my first couple videos, I literally was just like, I'm talking to my sister. I'm talking to my sister. I'm talking to my sister. And I would just talk to the cameras if I was talking to her. And like in the beginning, you know, I'm like, nobody's watching. Like, nobody's going to see that I'm in my pajamas or see that I'm wearing a diaper or anything like that. And so I just made it a point to give the audience the most value. Like as I've grown, I've been like, I want a better camera. I want better lighting. I want to make videos better. I'm always trying to be better. But in the beginning, it's like, you just have to shove yourself out there and like take failure off the table mm. and let it happen. Because if mm. you just keep getting hung up on like, well, I don't have the clothes. Well, I don't have this. Well, I don't have that. Like, I can't make videos. People tell me all the time, like, my house isn't aesthetically pleasing. I'm like, dude, I live in a 200-year-old house. My house is 200 years old. And my kids have their toys literally everywhere. And uh, the majority of my haters talk about my house. They're like, oh, you make that much money, but you live in that house? And I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> like, I have no debt, though. I have no debt, but I live in this house. Like, you know, it's just about, I tell people all the time, you have to get yourself out there. You have to like get past that mindset that like my stuff isn't nice enough. I'm not nice enough. I can't do this and just do it mm. and do the best that you can with what you have and keep going. Mm. I love how you said take failure off the table. I mean, what does that really mean to you? I mean, because for some reason it seems so easy for people to give up so quick 
and it and, and, and then claim that it's hard or claim that in I don't know what particularly they're comparing this to because I know that my I I feel like I know what hard is. I also experienced addiction, homelessness, um, my own personal battles in all areas, many areas of my life. I, I worked construction. Um, I was out in the, the hot Florida sun. I, I was, you know, you were a nurse working, I would assume 10 to 12 hour shifts on your feet, pregnant. I mean, those things sound really hard to me. Um, many of you describe your careers and what you're doing now, and they sound really hard. And so when 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 you're sitting behind your computer in your the comfort of your home and you're just using your fingers to type something and you say or you're just using your phone. And again, bear with me here for a second. We're just using our phones to just record a video and we're like, oh, my God, this is so hard for me. You know, I'm I'm trying to compute and compare. What do you mean by that? Like, what does heart? So, with how do you? What does taking failure off the table for you you mean? And what is how do you define hard? Meaning, can I'm I'm alluding to the fact that I think this being an entrepreneur is more mindset than it is physical labor because clearly people can't be talking about typing on a computer or lifting a phone is physically hard. It's mentally and emotionally hard. So if you took failure off the table, that must have meant that you had some sort of mindset, some sort of emotional and mental shift or commitment that you made to yourself. What does taking failure off the table really mean for you? So the way I like to think about it is like when you become a mom, you can't take the baby back, right? Like you could, you could put it up for adoption, but 99% of people are not going to do that. Right. So you have this baby, you don't know what to do and you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to go day to day. Like, okay, I've never, I mean, I had a son after I had a daughter, I've never looked at this thing before and figured out how to wipe it and clean it and everything. But like, I'm not just going to be like, oh, well now I have to get rid of my baby because that was hard. Um, you have to figure it out day to day. And as my kids grow, like I have two kids my daughter's four. As she grows, it's like every day it's something new. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like a new thing. This is its new level of hard. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not just going to be like, well, I got to get rid of my kid. Um, because it's much, much harder for me. The way I think about it is like, would I rather do this and be like a little bit frustrated and be like, okay, I don't know how to do this tech thing. Let me figure out this tech thing or let me deal with these haters and block a couple haters or whatever. Would I rather do that? Or would I rather go back to that nursing job where, you know, I had to fear for my life. I loved some of my patients, but there were a lot of patients where like, you gotta keep, you gotta keep your front to them. You gotta make sure you're always near an exit. Like, you know, I, being a psych nurse, you see some things, you see some yeah. people that should be in jail, but they didn't because they have mental health issues. So they're wow. very violent. They're not, nice people a lot of the people are pleasant they just have some issues but some of the people are not and you don't get to pick and choose what patients you're going to take like even That's me that. being pregnant it's like we're in the height of covid i have to take some violent patients because every single nurse on the floor has one i can't be like oh well you take two um i'm, I'm not gonna take any so it's like do i want to do that do i want to put my kids back in daycare and not see them for the majority of the day and be so exhausted and overstimulated um, that I just like can't function, you know, or would I rather figure it out? Would I rather figure it out? Um, you know, I, when I took failure off the table, I just said, I had no timeline. I wasn't like, I have to make this much in this much amount of time. I have to do it in this amount of time. I was like, I'm going to do it and we'll just see what happens. We'll see how long it takes. Once I hit a certain, you know, a certain threshold, I'll shoot for the next one. I'll shoot for the next one. I'll shoot for the next one. Um, but something that, me and Chelsea talk about all the time. And I keep referring to her because I literally talk to her 24 seven. So a lot of my mindset conversations are with her, but like we talk about all the time, like how desensitized people get to like the world, like, like this instant gratification that like it has to happen right now or it's a failure. It has to happen right now or it's a failure. And then, you know, once you start making money, it's like, 
well, I'm not doing good enough. Well, I'm failing because I'm only making $20,000 a month. I'm only making this much. And it's like, dude, how much were you making at your job? Because for yeah. me personally, I was making like 4,800 on a low contract. I was making like 8,000 on a high contract. Now I make about $50,000 a month on a slow month. So what are we saying here? Like it's too hard because, or it's too hard or you're failing because you're not where you wanna be. Like figure out how to get there. Figure out how to get there, do some research. I'm constantly buying more education. I'm constantly investing in my education, investing in my business. If I'm not where I wanna be, I'm gonna get there. And if I don't have the tools, I'm gonna find them. I'm not just gonna sit here and be like, oh, no, sorry, it didn't work out. It didn't work, I'm just gonna go back to nursing and see what happens, you know? I'll break my body until I'm 60. Like, I'm not gonna do that mm. um, because I found a way. This is the way mm. that I can give my kids the life that I wanna give them. I've paid off our debt. I've retired us both from nursing. Like. We have this life that we never dreamed of having unless we won the lottery, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to keep working at it. And if I don't know how to do something, I'm going to figure it out. It's not that hard to Google. I'm, I'm a major researcher. I read articles. I buy more courses. I buy more education until I figure it out. Yeah. <sighs> Hello. Hello. That's a double. Hold on a second. I need two hats here. That's a double hat throw. Boom. I mean, Kayla, and I'm switching up the hats. Hold on. Did I do a switch? No, I need to do a hat switch too, because <laughs> I, that hat was on fire. Um, so I think about your journey from living in a car to where you are right now. And I think about the grit and determination that it's taken you to, of course, become a nurse and then now have a child, have a C-section. Oh, my God. I mean, um, I know that experience. I was born of C-section. My son was born of C-section. Um, uh, two sons born of C-section, actually. And, um, and now this ultra-successful digital marketer. How can somebody use their mess as a message. How have you turned your struggles into your strengths and articulated? Where have you found the courage to be honest? How have you decided to not hold back in your content? I mean, you've laid it all out on the table just for us this morning. So where did that courage to really be direct, honest, and did you deciding to be honest and really talk about where you've come from in your struggles, did that also simultaneously give you confidence to suddenly say, I have nothing to hide here and I'm saying it exactly how it is. And has that ultimately, do you believe, helped your confidence or your, your content? You're coming off as very confident this morning. So has your confidence evolved since you made your first video? And do you attribute that to your honesty? Do you attribute that to just good old practice? What do you attribute your confidence and how has that evolved since you filmed your first video? Um, well, I think I've always had the determination. Like that's not something I really had to learn. Um, I think I've always had it, you know, um, from being someone who was, who was living in my car, who paid for their own college out of their pocket, like working and doing all these things. Like I've always had that determination. I've always had that grit. Um, I have always been a very direct person. Um, I've always been someone who just says exactly what I'm thinking. And a lot of people don't like that. <laughs> a lot of people don't like that. Um, I come from a family though, who's like that. Um, I tell people all the time, I'm like, I'm the nicest one in my family. I'm the least outspoken one in my family. Um, I'm the oldest of 11. I come from Tennessee and my family's huge. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people. And it's like, people meet me and I'm like, yeah, I'm the mellowest one out of all of us. <laughs> like I'm the mellowest one. But I think that that confidence is like, I mean, I've always had the confidence to say the truth. I think, um, and to tell people like exactly what it is. If I've figured out something, I'm not going to keep it a secret from you. I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. And if you don't want to go out and do it, then that's up to you. 
Um, but I think a lot of that comes with becoming a parent too. Like you can't hide stuff from your kids. They're either going to figure it out from you or they're going to figure it out from somebody else. Mm. Either way, you're going to have to talk about it and you're going to have to like have the hard conversations, right? You're going to have to do the hard things and have the hard conversations. Um, when I first started this, obviously I was not feeling very confident. I was in the height of postpartum. Um, you know, I was like, mm, this is the worst. <laughs> Making these videos is the worst. Um, I do think that the community though, that I've gained from this has had a lot to do with it, a lot to do with like my confidence and everything. And obviously like once you work so hard at something and you know, you're putting in the work and you know, you're doing everything you can and you're seeing results, it does give you like that, like that cause and effect thing, you know, like, yeah. oh, I cooked this bread and I worked for eight hours on it and it came out of the oven and it was delicious. Like it was amazing. Um, so it's like, if you know, you're putting in everything you have into this and then you're seeing the results, it like gives you a boost, right? It gives you like a dopamine rush. It gives you, you know, something to keep going, like some fire to keep going. And then you can go to the next thing and keep going and the next thing and keep going. So I definitely think I have gained confidence from the beginning to now. I think that that's from the community. I think that that's from practice, like you said, um, and I also think it's because like, I have worked so hard at this and I love working hard. I love it. Um, mm -hmm. I love learning and absorbing and then like putting those things into action. So when I get to see the results of my own work, like I feel amazing about that. I love seeing the results of what I did myself, especially this, like I built it up from the ground up, right? Like I took the education, I had all the pieces, I put them together. And then I started from zero. I started from zero followers. I started from zero money, zero anything in this business. And I was like, let's just do it. Let's just see what happens. Mm. Um, so, you know, I worked hard to get to where I'm at. And I think that a lot of people like to say like, yeah, but you have this many followers now, but you have this much. And I'm like, yeah, but look at how many videos I've posted. Like I've posted 800 and something videos. I show wow. up every day. I show up when I'm puking. Like, you know, I like we talked about this the other night on our mentorship call we it's a choice but we don't take days off if we're gonna batch we're gonna batch content and then you can schedule it if you're going on vacation you can do this you can do that but like we don't take a day off i don't take a day off i work hard at this i believe that my results come from the work that i put into it um and i believe the the confidence comes from my hard work and dedication to this business so i hope that answered your question <laughs> yeah and more what i mean way more what what limiting beliefs did you deal with when you i mean obviously you project confidence you are confident you have overcome so much to get to where you are and i just love your story i'm i love getting to know you and th this this is incredible um what limiting beliefs did you deal with when you did start maybe creating videos like what 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 were some of the things that popped up inside of your head um and that came up for you that you had to overcome and how how did you overcome those things mm, you're asking the good questions today <laughs> um i mean i think when i first started i definitely was like you know i wanted to see what would happen i saw these people being successful but i didn't necessarily know if I was going to be successful or when or anything like that, like I said, I had no timeline. So when I showed up, I said, I just really, really want to make $10,000 a month. I just really want to do that. And like, I mean, in the beginning I did, I had never recorded like a video. I mean, I'm a picture person. So like, I've always taken pictures of my kids and videos of my kids and like posted them to show my grandma on Facebook, but I had never like been in the public eye like this. So it's definitely like hard to show up online. It's hard. And you know, people like come for your throat right away. They come, like any insecurity that you think you may have, people point it out right away. So like, it's yeah. hard to get past that. It's hard to be like, they don't know me. They don't know anything about me. Like, it's fine. Um, I think that it took a lot of like acceptance from me, like acceptance that like, I was doing the best thing for my family. Like I love myself, my family loves me. And like, I'm going to do this until it works. Um, but like making videos is not, it's not like easy, it's simple, but it's not easy, you know? So it's like, again, it was something that I was like, I don't know how to do this. I, I have no idea how to do this. And I had to figure it out. I mean, I took 
on top of this education, I've taken another like $500 Instagram growth course. I've taken a couple different social media courses, like to figure out social media and make the best videos and trending audios and things like that. Like I do a lot of research, um, but I think in the beginning, it, it it is something that you have to get through mentally to put yourself out there, right? Um, but now it's like, you think about it, like, okay, I can make a thousand dollars from this reel. I can make $10,000 from this reel. Like, you know, and it's like, what about the potential, right? Like if, if I could have just made $10,000, it would have all been worth it. So I was like, you know, people are going to make fun of my forehead. People are going to make fun of my house. I'm just going to keep putting myself out there and keep doing it. I mean, there were times that I cried. There were times that I was like, you know, this is hard. Like people are making fun of me and people are being mean and you know maybe i'm not cut out for social media but i was determined to make ten thousand dollars a month just so we didn't have to go back to work what's fascinating to me is as a psych nurse right i mean you've dealt with probably you know truly and you described some of those hard things just a moment ago i mean violent patients um, patients who you couldn't turn your, your back on. And, and again, um, the, the, you know, you speaking from your own experience and with compassion, not that these are bad people just can be mentally unstable. And that was your job. And, 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 you know, when you compare that to, to the, 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 um, you know, some of the feedback negative specifically that you get online, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, more understandable about why this can be so difficult because the mm -hmm. feelings are the same, right? Yeah. The anxiety, yeah. the fear, right? Um, it, it's sort of like the, we have the same fear of holding up a camera as we did running from a saber tooth tiger, you know, 10,000 yeah. years ago, you know? Yeah. And, and so our, our body has the same reaction, but we have to remind ourselves that, wait, hold on a second that comment from that person is coming from somebody who has an anonymous account who's never posted yes. a video who no picture no pictures and is literally an anonymous troll who yeah. is living under a metaphorical bridge somewhere yeah. right on the internet somewhere and who doesn't even have the guts to digitally say it to my face like their profile doesn't even have a name again they don't have any pictures so what the hell am i giving this person so much credit or or, or letting them rent so much space in my head and the other thing that i think you touched on that is just so obvious and important but you don't really get to experience it until you actually have success is the fact that when you start making money from your efforts online your 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 care and your um the amount of space that you are willing to allow somebody to rent in your head decreases dramatically right mm -hmm. um your confidence increases dramatically because now you're proving like any business that it can work yeah it, any ever but isn't every business like that? If I started a popsicle stand on the side of the road, I would probably have, a, think about planning a party, right? Your baby shower, your b bachelorette, party, whatever it is, your birthday party. We all, we all have nervousness around, is anybody going to show up? Mm -hmm. Right? So it, but when they do and people start rolling through the front door, it's like, ah, you know, people do love me. I, I do yeah. have friends, right? And it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. You have to build it first. And if mm -hmm. you build it, sort of taking a, a phrase from the old Field of Dreams movie, if you build it, they really usually do come. But yeah. it's about taking that leap of faith. And that is the that is the time period. Those first, and I like how you said it, you didn't put a time frame on yourself. You didn't put a deadline. Look, friends, if you're doing this and you're marketing online and you're changing things up and testing various different things and consistently working diligently and disciplined for 365 days and you get zero results after 365 days of good, solid effort and work, you probably should quit. You probably should quit, right? 
but I've never seen a single person give it 365 days of honest, disciplined, determined, hard work, consistently working their business every single day and not get results. We always quit before the miracle happens. We mm -hmm. always lie to ourselves and others about how much work we're really putting in. And I, I know I'm getting a little hardcore right now, but remember, this is the school of entrepreneurship. It's not a job fair, right? So the truth is, is that if I'm not getting results, it's probably because I haven't either been doing it long enough or the ultimate question is, Am I really doing anything at all? Am I really giving it an honest effort? And that is why many times I ask people at our events, and you may have even seen me do this last weekend, Kayla, how many of you would actually pay yourself a reasonable salary to work in your business? Meaning that if you had an employee that you had said, I'm going to pay you $100,000 a year, it's about $8,000 a month to do all the work in my business for me and they put forth the effort that you're putting forth, would you actually be happy with paying them that money? And the truth is the majority of people have to say, no, I wouldn't pay an employee to put in the work that I'm putting in. And those are the people who are not getting results. And so this self-honesty piece in entrepreneurship, you don't have a boss that you're lying to. You don't have a manager that you're explaining why you were late coming into work this morning. It's all about self-accountability. How have you created accountability to yourself and also boundaries within your house to say, hey, look, I've got to work these hours. Mommy's filming this time. I'm not available tonight for Netflix and chill, honey. I'm sorry. I've got to do some extra work. Like, how are you saying no? How are you creating boundaries in order to actually run and operate your business? Because you don't have a boss sitting over your shoulders, making sure that you do what you're supposed to do. So... In the beginning, like, I mean, I think that this is all like an experience, right? Like you try something and if it doesn't work, you have to try something else or you have to work harder or you have to figure something else out. So in the beginning, I obviously didn't have a lot of the automation stuff that I have now, but like now I have like a DM autoresponder. I have things that do a lot of the things for me. Like I have a commenter that comments to people on my Instagram when they leave a comment. Um, I bat content. So like I will record and like a couple other marketers think I'm absolutely insane for this. But like when I sit down and I batch, I'm going to get like a good 40 to 50 videos, if not 60, because I have a list. Like I'm very strategic. I will make a list one day during my son's nap. These are all the videos I'm going to do. I saved them all on my Instagram. This is what I'm going to do tomorrow. The next day I will like get ready for the day you know, after I drop my daughter off for school and my son takes a two to three hour nap, I will spend his whole nap recording videos, his whole nap. Um, throughout the day, it's like, you know, I don't spend, when I'm with my kids, I'm not spending like a ton of active time on this because my kids are gonna like hurt themselves. If I'm staring at my phone a lot, you know, I'll post and I that's pretty much it. I'll post, I'll write something in my stories. And a lot of the work that I do is after my kids are asleep and like, I firmly believe in the mom cracks of life. Like we say that all the time. We do this business in the mom cracks of life because it's true. When my kids are asleep napping or when they're asleep at night, that's when I do the bulk of my work. Um, they go to bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock. So I can stay up till like 11 o'clock. And, you know, I'll post and I'll do some research and I'll read some things and I'll answer some emails. And that's what I'm doing. Um, when I do content, like I said, I will do like two weeks worth of content at a time. And then I have a whole list. So when I go to post, I'm like, okay, I can pick literally any of these that I already wrote down and I already have and post them. Um, so I'm not, you know, the day of recording a video or editing it or like, oh crap, like I have to figure out something to do um, because I've already planned it all in advance. So a lot of the active work that I do is when my kids are asleep. So I don't necessarily, I guess I don't necessarily have like too many boundaries with it because it's just, I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. It's not possible during the day for me to be like, okay, be quiet, be quiet. Mommy's got to record because my son is like a baby dinosaur. He just like banshee screams at me and makes a bunch of like squealing noises. So there's just, there's absolutely no way. Um, so I do, I do a lot of work when he naps. I do all my stuff when he naps. I have my therapy appointments when he naps. I 
go run errands when he naps. Like I do everything when he's napping. Um, and then the rest of it I do when my kids are asleep. So Love I that. guess I don't really have many boundaries <laughs> when How, it comes to that stuff. You, you mentioned therapy. I do a lot of therapy as well. How do you feel that that plays a part, your personal development, your true emotional in intelligence in development and in, in healing right how do you feel that that stuff way over there in the personal side of things actually behooves and helps your business as an entrepreneur as well i think that a lot of i mean i'm a psych nurse so i'm <laughs> trying not to get too psyche but um i think so much comes from your brain like so much of your actions and the way that you do things and the way that you carry yourself and the way that you put effort into things comes from your brain and the things that you've been through the things that you're actively and subconsciously processing um you know i had a very traumatic childhood i was called and told on a daily basis like you're unworthy you're being treated this way because of you because you are wrong you did something you did this and in the reality, it was that my parents had a lot of issues that they didn't deal with. And they put them on me and my siblings. They put them on us. And a lot of work that I do, I, I do so that I can be a better person, so that I can be a better mom is the forefront because I never want to make my kids feel the way that my parents made me feel. Like they will not ever feel that way. They will not. Um, and so I think a lot of the stuff that I do in my brain and the processing and like you know, a lot of the acceptance, I have to do a lot of acceptance because I'm never going to get apologies for a lot of the trauma that I went through. It's from people who believe that I deserved that trauma as a seven-year-old and an eight-year-old. So a lot of things that I went through will never be acknowledged by the people who did them, will never be apologized for, will never be spoken about. So I have to do a lot of acceptance about like, okay, this is what it is. This is how I feel. This is what I've been through. It was not okay. And I need to accept that and, and process it and go on. So a lot of that with entrepreneurship is like, okay, I want to do this. And to do this, I have to be out in the public. I have to, for me and the type of business I'm doing, make videos. I have to deal with some negatives and I have to accept that and process through it and be able to move on through it and move on past it. Um, so I have practiced heavily with my therapist acceptance 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 and i have like a process of how i process things how i accept them and how i go on and a lot of people like you said they say it's too hard but but really it's that acceptance right like i i can't build a funnel i can't build a funnel it's too hard i can't be on camera it's too hard but if you just sat with it for a minute and got uncomfortable in it and you're like, why am I uncomfortable? I'm uncomfortable because I'm a little bit insecure. I'm uncomfortable because I've never done this before and it's hard and I don't like doing hard things. But on the other side of it is this. So I'm going to accept that it's hard. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to move past it. Um, a lot of the people who quit is because they just can't accept it. They just can't process and accept what it is, what could happen with it, what could happen if they don't do it and actually move through it. They just sit in that uncomfortability and they say, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over here away from it. And I'm never going to go back to it. Well said. Triple, dipple, dipper, double hat throw 50 million times. Uh, you know, I have often said that my journey in therapy, my journey through sobriety is my entrepreneur superpower. It's my entrepreneur superpower. And oftentimes people say to me, well, I, I don't have a story like that. I don't have a rough patch in life. And I think, well, thank God you don't. Or you probably haven't faced it and talked about it yeah. and had somebody help you navigate through it. And you've just spent maybe a lot of your time avoiding it. And we often use things like drugs and alcohol and shopping and porn and all this different kind of stuff to avoid facing the things that hurt, the things that make us uncomfortable. And those are hard things to face. And so that also spills over into entrepreneurship. When we go to start a business, entrepreneurship is hard. 
Nobody said it was easy. We're very, very careful on every website, in every video, on every time I create a, a, a piece of content, not to use the word easy, because nothing about this is easy, but also nothing about life is easy. Nothing about living a healthy life or lifestyle is easy. And one of the biggest things that this requires is not for you to be physically dominant. You know, you going to the gym every day is honestly not going to make a huge difference in your entrepreneurial success, meaning specifically you having a big chest or big biceps or, or big muscular hamstrings. None of that. But you know what? You overcoming the, the things that or at least facing and having some healthy coping mechanisms like you talked about for some of the things that happened in your childhood that may still be lingering in your adulthood, such as the negative self-talk about you, about what people said to you, about you, what the things that you heard your mother say to your father or your father say to your mother that you just took on that must also be about me too, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they aren't, weren't even directly said to us, but we take them on as messaging. That must be, that must be. I grew up, my father was very poor. He, he, he was alcoholic, depressed. I, I, I felt shame about that. I have family history of violence and alcoholism and addiction in, in death, uh, in, in, not in fun, in, you know, not in not in uh, you know in very traumatic ways. My father's father was killed in front of him, you know, because he he was in a violent, drunken rage. That sort of generational shame can haunt us into our adulthood. And when we go to start a business, I can really be feeling like I'm not good enough. Nobody's going to want to listen to me. Nobody's going to want to take my advice. I don't have any value to give. And, and if I haven't ever dealt with any of my limiting beliefs, my childhood trauma, if I've avoided all of that my whole life, then it's probably going to spill over and become a pattern in avoiding hard things when it comes to setting up my funnel. And so we realize that it's, it's not the funnel. It's never the funnel. It's never the autoresponder. That's just a manifestation of me not being willing to face hard things, not me not willing to push through a difficult circumstance. And so, again, what is my superpower? It's not that I'm a tech genius. I, 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 I had a literally I've got 10 men at my house here for a men's recovery weekend. We travel the country and stay at each other's house three times a year. And I had literally a 65 year old man the other day, tell me that I needed to do one of my best friends, 65 year old guy, tell me that I needed to download the new Apple software onto my phone. Here I am a dead gum millennial. I should know this stuff, right? But here he's giving me tech advice. And the truth is I'm not a technical genius. I have a hard time putting in syncing up my calendar sometimes with these Apple stuff. But the superpower is facing hard stuff. The superpower is getting sober and staying sober 15 years through a lot of hard stuff. The superpower is, you know, staying committed to recovery and groups of recovery and in and, and, and going to therapy like you're talking about, in talking about, in processing through difficult circumstances that are coming up in my life. And that allows me that when something like my damn funnel won't connect or my domain name, it's not it's not a huge thing. It's not a big, oh, my God, this must be a scam and I must be inadequate and incapable. It's, ooh, I'm feeling some feelings of inadequacy here. I'm feeling some overwhelming frustration. Let me use a healthy, healthy coping mechanism to deal with this, which is not drugs and alcohol anymore. It's just taking a step back, doing some breathing, maybe doing some exercise, whatever, re just readjusting, then reapproaching and trying again and pushing through it until it's done. And then when it's done, feeling actual self-esteem from doing esteemable things. And that just builds and builds and builds. And over 13 years of my career of doing this, it's not been the big mountains I've conquered that have built 
self-esteem and confidence. It's the small little daily milestones of doing esteemable things and pushing through facing hard stuff like you talked about that's built confidence. What have you learned about yourself, Kayla, through this journey that you either needed to be reminded of and you're so thankful that you were reminded of it or you've learned new about yourself? Hmm. Um, I mean, I always thought about myself, like, as far as like life skills, like I always thought, okay, I'm like so resourceful. Like, you know, I didn't have food tonight and I figured out something to eat and like, I'm good at finding things. Right. But with this business, I just feel like I tell my fiance all the time, like I'm a freaking genius. Like I am so smart because I will try to figure something out or I'll like reach a roadblock and I'm like, you know, for a minute I will get frustrated, like you said, or like, I'll have to look at it a different way or I'll have to leave it and come back to it. And like, it'll be something like so simple that I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I figure it out. And like, I have other people in this business that come to me and ask me a lot of questions because I've absorbed so much knowledge when it comes to this business, because I like obsess over it. I love it. I want to figure out more. I want to learn more. Um, so I've just like figured out how extremely resourceful I am when it comes to like, not even like survival, right? Like I've always been able to survive. Um, but I think that like from this business, like getting things like finances, like taking stress off of my shoulders from like things from a job, like being like berated all the time in a job and being scared about the, you know, the patients and stuff that it's like, I have this ability to thrive and I never knew I would get to that point because I was always surviving. I was always surviving. Like, you know, even when we got this house, we used like a large par portion of our emergency fund to get this house. So like every stage in my life, I've been surviving. As soon as I have something, well, I need it for this. Well, I'll survive. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And like, now I'm at the point where I don't just have to figure out how to survive, right? I have to figure out how to thrive. And I feel like it's this like beautiful thing where you're like, okay, well, like, how can I like show myself some appreciation today? How can I like figure out what I like to do? You know, you lose yourself in being a mom and in survival mode, and then you have no idea what you even like, you know, like when I started this business, people would be like, well, what are your hobbies? I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a hobby. Um, and like now I can be like, you know, I do have a hobby. I like doing this. I like doing that. This is fun to me. Like, you know, I ha I'm learning so much about myself and learning how to thrive and learning that I'm so resourceful when it comes to things. And it's just, it's like this new version of myself that I didn't know was going to exist after kids. And after we got into these like safe, you know, admirable careers, where we were still having to work ourselves to the bone for the money that we had. It's like, you know, we finally reached this part where we're like no longer having to survive. And like my fiance has struggled with that as well. He's like, I don't even know what to do sometimes because it's like, you just get out of that mindset where you have to survive and you have to survive. And then it's like, what do I do now? Now I can just do what I want to do. Now I can just like think about what next trip I want to take or what next thing would be cool to have or what investment to make. And it's like, once you get to that point, it's like such a shock that it's like you, you get to thrive now. Like you get to thrive and you get to figure out what do you like? What do you enjoy? What do you want to eat for dinner? What do you, you know, not just, I don't have any money. So we have to eat spaghetti for three days. Like you get to learn to thrive. And I think that that is like the most beautiful thing about this business is me getting us to a point where all of us get to now learn to thrive, like learn what we like, learn to be in this uncomfortable, beautiful stage of life where we're not just surviving. So, so beautiful. So well said. Um, we're we're going to end it at that. Uh, you have been so inspirational this morning. I look forward to many more opportunities of you coming and, and sharing as much as you're willing to share with our, our community here. 
we're really grateful to have you as a part of the community. And this morning has just been a fantastic example of that and uh, just a wonderful, legendary way to end the week. So come back and keep me posted on your journey. Um, I can't wait to talk to you again uh, and, and see just how much you're thriving, not surviving anymore, but thriving <laughs> in, in, in the next few months. And um, stay legendary, my friend. Okay, thanks for being on this morning. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk to you later, Kayla. Okay. All right, my friends, you can go and find Kayla at that mama in pajamas, uh, over on Instagram and, uh, and, and wow, just wow. That one is worth a re-listen. My friends, that one is worth, uh, really digging back in and going through some of the nuggets that were dropped. Um, I, I do have a beeping noise. Some of you asked, what is the beeping noise in the back? It's one of my buddies. He has something going off and I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> and, and so I'll, I'll get up and I'll, I'll, I'll ch figure out how to turn that off. But uh, with that being said, um, remember that you can go and also find these audios over on all the major podcast platforms if you want to check them out and listen to the replay. You can listen to the replay right here on Facebook. We also put them over on tick, uh, YouTube. And my friends, dig in. If that is not inspiration to go through these damn courses and these programs and figure these skills out so you can go from surviving to thriving, we need to check your pulse and make sure you're still alive. Have a fantastic Friday. Have a legendary weekend. And we'll see you back here on Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern time for yet another wake up legendary. Get out of here. I love you. Stay legendary. Peace. <laughs>